Hi, this is David. In this video, I'm going to talk about alerts in Application Insights. Application Insights spends a lot of its energy collecting information, collecting you know, things to logs and to metrics, and alerts allow you to do something, take some action when some condition is met with regard to that information that's collected. It allows you to do that very quickly. An alert consists of three pieces, a signal, which is some measurement that could be the average CPU of an Azure function. It could be the response time of a uh, web page uh, and a condition. And that condition is something like if that CPU percentage gets above 80%. It could be a static number like that, or it could be if it gets above average, what's, you, what's typical for that, maybe 20% above what's typical, things like that. And then finally, an action, which is something that's performed when the condition is true against that signal. And that action could be a way of notifying someone, like an email or a text message, or it could be sending it off to some workflow, maybe sending it to another application, like a uh, uh, Azure Logic app. To start using Azure Application Insight Alerts, we need to log into the Azure portal, which I've done here, go to Monitor, and then select Application Insights, and finally select the application that we're concerned with. And um, if you're, I showed how to do this in an earlier video, how to create this. I think that's in video 155. You want to watch that again, then that'll show you how to create this. But once you're in here, this left menu has a section called Monitoring, and under that section is Alerts. And so from here, we've got Alert Rules. We have action groups and we have alert processing rules which are kind of uh, exceptions to the alert rules things are post processing of the rules um, we're going to cover the first two in these things if i click on this create button you notice that it allows me to create one or more of those or if i can dive into alert rules there's a create button up here and i can use that as well it's the same thing so the first thing remember we have signal condition and action let's set, select the signal here now here's some popular ones here maybe availability and depending on what we select here it'll change what's being asked down here you'll notice and um if you, if this if you don't like these you can go here to see all signals and this is grouped up into log search the logs actually runs a query if i select one of these things here so for example page views trend it actually displays a kql query right here that we can modify if we want to but i'm going to close that and instead go back to go back to all signals here and i'll show you the down here these are all the metrics right here that are available to you. All right, so um, I think I'll just select server response time right here. And the next thing is the alert logic. This is the condition. You know, what is going to actually cause this thing to fire, this alert to fire? Um, and you notice that there's an option, dynamic or static. So the server response time, if I say that the, I can select, first of all, the average, maximum, or minimum. So I want to aggregate these to, Say if the average server response time is greater than, let's say, a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, then I want the alert to fire. That's my condition right here. Now that's this is a static number. If I change it to dynamic, then instead of uh, putting a number in here, it just says high, medium, or low. And we're letting Azure decide what does it mean by high, medium, or low. It'll decide that based on doing some machine learning against historical data. So here you're just trying to say, if there's a, is there an anomaly? Has it changed? Is it Does it vary from what the usual response time is? Is it greater than greater than a medium response time or greater than a high response time? Or maybe some for some metrics you might care if it's less than or even greater than or less than. It's up to you, it depends on the metric, it depends on your needs. So um, let's say I'll just do static, if it's greater than a thousand, that's my condition. I can refine that condition further by adding dimensions here. Um, so for example, if I wanted to say if the result code equals, and I select on this, it actually would show me some historical data, but I don't have any historical data because I just recently created this. Um, so that's okay, I can actually just enter a something like that and i can refine it a little bit further i'm going to skip that for right now that certainly is not required i don't need that this could be sufficient for it and then right here i want to say you know 
how often do I want to evaluate and check this every minute or every five minutes, whatever. It's up to you how often you want to do it. There's a, there is a cost every time that you fire this thing. So cost will be a factor, but maybe it's super important and you want every minute to be checking on this thing. And then the look back period determines, you know, how the av what, what does that mean for the uh, if I say average, maximum, medium during the last five minutes? That's what that applies to. All right, and you notice this is a tabbed interface. There's my condition. Let me go over to the actions. And with actions, I'm going to specify an action group. And the reason we have that is because then we can reuse those over and over again. There are some built-in action groups right here. All these AG manager, AG owner, application insights, and uh, yeah, these these up here are built-in ones. So I could select those, in which case it will send a message to this, or I can create my own. And there's a button right here, create an action group. And generally, this is what I like to do. I want to say, all right, there is a uh, uh, put it in this resource group. Uh, this so it's available for to be reused. Uh, region, if I want to, I can specify it's available in all regions, or I can specify a specific region. Um, the I have to give it a unique name, so we'll call this one uh, GCast Action Group. That's fine. And a display name, maybe I want to put. something different there. Um, and then uh, the next thing, this is, now I'm in the action group dialog. I want to specify, okay, what happens in here? Notifications are, I'm going to email a message to, and this pops up right here. Here, email, SMS, push, or voice. So this dialog here pops up, and it says, okay, how do I want to send this? If, the, if a condition is met, do I want to send an email? And if I do, I have to put in an email address right there. And Or do I want to send an SMS, in which case I'll have to put in a country code and a phone number here. And, or I'll clear that. Or do I want to uh, send a, a mobile push notification? or make a voice call here. So what you'll do here really depends upon the severity of this. And maybe you want to do multiple things here. Maybe you want to say, when you select this action group, I'm going to both email and SMS and call them up and so on. For this, uh, you also have the option here of, if you want either just English language text, or do you want to be sending some well-known JSON schema here? I'll just select the, 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 the text. Uh, come in here. I've got to give this a name. I'll say uh, DGR because that's send it's emailing it to me, and uh, I'll say DGR email. How about that? And so on. Uh, what's next? Actions in here. Here is so you can uh, you can specify notifications, or you can specify actions, or you can specify both. Actions are things that are not just notifications. They're sending things to some other workflow, maybe dropping it on an event hub, maybe calling a logic app, uh, calling a webhook, things like if you want to call an Azure function, that's ideal for that. Something like that. If you want to do something a little bit more complex than just sending a message, maybe you want to have some workflow that's triggered by this. Then you would do it here, specify that. Here and then here in this case, I selected function, so it wants to know what's the actual name of the function that I'm going to select. I don't have any functions in this, so I'm going to do that. And then tags, uh, tags don't really do anything, but they are good for uh, reporting later on if you wanted to group together, say all of the uh, action groups and all the all the Azure assets by department. You can filter or group or sort or whatever on these things here. So they're useful for that, but they don't actually affect it at all. And finally, this thing here will tell me this review and create tab will tell me if I've done anything wrong. If I've got some missing or inconsistent things, then I'll click on create. And it's done. It created it right here. So now I was, remember, I was in the middle of creating an alert rule. Now I've got my alert rule and I, it set that alert rule here. And in fact, if I went back and selected it, it should be available in here in the future. Um, details here is uh, the severity of it. Uh, you probably want to give some indication as to whether or not if the, what are we doing here? Server response time is higher than 
uh, one second. Is that is that a critical error? Probably not. Is it an error? Maybe. Maybe it's just a warning. Maybe it's an indication that something might be happening, but it's not really slow. So you can give uh, this a name. Gcast rule and the description if you want to. That's optional here. And again, for the alert rule, you can also add some tags and review and create. And here's where I'm actually going to create the alert rule. And I click on create. And it's done right there. Uh, and now I have an alert rule and it will just run and click on close this off here. And you notice that because I in the middle of this, I created an action group. It is there's my Gcast action group right there. In fact, if I decide that's not what I want, maybe I want to come in here and change some of the rules about that. Some of the properties of that I can that. I can do that on disabled. Here's kind of a nice thing. If I click on test here and give it a uh, something like that, then because it's an email that's going to me, then I should see, I should receive an email within a few seconds that actually has this. I did get an email originally just letting me know that I've been added to this. This came in a minute ago when I actually created that, but in the test. And we're back and here is the email that I had that showed that it was triggered just just a test email, but this is an example of the kind of thing that you would get if this alert was triggered. Click here to view in the Azure portal and it'll take me to. The Azure portal where I can find these things. So in this video, I have shown you how to manage your Azure Application Insight alerts, how to create an alert rule, and how to create an action group. This is David. Thank you for watching.